Hey everybody, it's Frozen with Outdoor Adventures and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to wrap up all the gear finally and we're going to talk about electronics. Not just electronics, but the way I'm going to be filming and the applications that I'm going to be using on my phone, software for editing, etc, etc. So let's just go to the table and get right into it. So I'll be completely honest, this category of gear did take me a while to dial down to figure out what I actually wanted and needed on the trail. And I think this is going to be the setup that's going to last me the entire way. So let's just get right into it. All right. First up is the workhorse of the electronics. This is the Google Pixel 3. If you haven't heard about this thing, this thing has amazing photography capabilities, amazing video, really, really high quality. The sound for the microphone isn't all that great, but I can fix that in post-production. So that's what I'll be taking and we'll come back to this thing when we talk about some of the applications that I will be using on the trail. Alright, let's talk about this thing. This is a Manfrotto, kind of like a phone mount. So what I'll do with this is I can just attach it to my phone like that. Google's trying to listen to me. And I can then hook it onto a couple things. One is this stick pick, which there's a hole here. If you can see that, that goes to the tip of your trekking pole. And then this can actually screw into the bottom of the phone. So you can kind of just hold it like that on your trekking pole. Or what I can also do is I can attach it to this UltraPod. And this is a really, really uh, lightweight um, tripod, basically. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use this a whole heck of a lot, but I figured it'd be nice for the walking away shot. See, I can just kind of angle it wherever I want. It has a little ball joint in there. Uh, really cheap. You can find these on Amazon. I'll have all the links to this stuff in the video description if you're interested. But I think this is going to work out really great and kind of bevel it and swivel it and everything. And that's how I'm going to be getting my shots. All right, headlamp. This is the one I've chosen. This is my literally my favorite piece of gear. This thing is so freaking light. This is a Nightcore NU25. I got it from lightsmith.com with this headband mod. Usually it comes with that you know, that one inch webbing that goes around your, your head. But with this weight of a lamp, all you really need is a, you know, some shock cord. And this is so absolutely comfortable. It's also rechargeable. It has a 900 milliamp battery and it charges micro USB. While we're talking about rechargeable devices, this is a pair of Bluetooth wireless headphones. And these are from Anchor. They're called the Anchor Curve headphones. These have a 12 and a half hour battery life. They charge micro USB and the sound quality you get out of these is amazing. Now I'm one of those people that enjoys music every once in a while down the trail. I also enjoy listening to audiobooks. So I obviously don't want to disturb anybody and just have the audio play from my phone speaker. So I opted for a pair of wireless headphones. And these are also rain resistant. So water resistant headphones. And these are going to be working out great. I, I just can't believe the battery power, the weight, and the sound quality that you get out of something like this. And these are only 25 bucks, if you can believe that. Pretty cheap. Uh, also, I hate dealing with the wire, like I said. These are only a couple grams more than the wired version. Um, the reason why I really didn't want the wired version, though, is because I'm unable to charge my phone and listen to music at the same time because I don't have a headphone port. So it just has the USB-C input. Let's talk about the battery bank that I chose. After like five or six battery banks, testing them, trying them out, seeing how many f charges I can actually get out of my phone, I've decided on the Anchor PowerCore Speed PD. Now the PD stands for Power Delivery, which is simply just a USB cable that outputs to 30 watts, I believe. This thing charges over power delivery in three and a half hours and it's a 20,000 milliamp battery. So 20,000 milliamp battery, you think that I'd be able to get you know, six or seven charges out of my phone? No, I'm only able to get four charges out of my phone and that's due to the battery versus USB output conversion. Once you start getting this high, you lose a lot of power between the batteries in the USB. I'm not going to go into too technical of terms. I'll put a little formula at the bottom of your screen so you can kind of figure out your battery power before you buy it. But yeah, only four charges out of this. I think this is going to suffice though, because what I'm hoping for is I'm going to have a charge coming out of a resupply out of a town. 
I'm hoping that charge lasts for two days. If I can get that charge to last for two days, I still have four more charges on here, totaling eight days just in the battery bank. So we're talking about a total of 10 days. I think it's gonna last about six, which is gonna be perfect because that's probably the longest stretch that I'm gonna need you know, between resupplies. So I'm not really worried about it. Another thing I got to charge this thing, obviously I'm gonna need a wall charger. So I have purchased an Aki wall charger. It has the power delivery, USB, and a standard USB port on it. Now I tried to go Anchor here. I really did. And Anchor does make uh, you know, a wall outlet charger with the same exact ports. However, whenever I tried it, this power delivery port did not output at the full 30 watts. I think it was like something like 18 watts. Contacted Anchor Support and they have to change their entire product line because it got past their, uh, their quality testing, which is insane to me. You know, somebody like a company like Anchor, I mean, everybody knows Anchor makes some high quality products. Now, the wall charger that they gave you with this battery bank just had a USB-C and that worked fine, but their dual port did not equal the charging output that this needed to charge. Um, I was, it was taking 12 and a half hours to charge this when this charger, this outlet, just charges this in three and a half hours. So three and a half hours is a very, very fast time to charge something this big. And this is what I'm using. Also has a flip top or flip up collapsible, what do you want to call it? Uh, retractable, I guess, is the word, uh, outlet prong. So this isn't going to jab a hole in my dry bag at all like that. All right, as far as cables go, I'm bringing three cables. I'm bringing a USB to micro USB. This will charge the headphones and the headlamp non-negotiable. I need that. I'm also bringing a USB-C to USB-C that supports the 30 watt power delivery. Um, so basically I just hook this up, hook this up into the power delivery slot. Also this is an input and an output so it also charges my phone in about 40 minutes. I can use the other side too but it's a lot slower. So that will be how I'm going to charge this brick. Finally I am as a just-in-case item I guess you want to say I am bringing a regular USB to USB-C. Say there's no outlets available and someone's still charging their stuff, I figure maybe they'll have an extra USB on there so I can at least get some kind of charge to my phone so I can do editing or whatever I need to do in town. Okay, so as far as applications, and we're gonna have some announcements at the end of this video too. Um, for now, I just made a folder called Appalachian Trail. Obviously, the first two apps I'm going to use our Lyft and Uber. I just signed up for them. I've never used them before, if you can believe that. But I feel like they're going to be an extra addition. If I can't get a shuttle or a hitch, I can always call an Uber or a Lyft. All right, the next app I want to talk about is AT Weather. Now, this is a web-based service. But basically, what you do is you can enter either your mile marker, your state, or your shelter that you're by, and you can actually pull up the weather of the closest shelter. So. Uh, this is pretty cool and it's you know really easy to get to on the trail and I can see the highs for the, the day and the lows for the night. So that's going to be a great addition to my applications for the AT. All right, next thing I want to talk about is the Gut Hook app. I got this on a Black Friday sale for $40. It's going to be amazing and what it is, it's basically a GPS tracker, like you know, like a Google Maps kind of thing, but it shows the line for the Appalachian Trail. So if I get off of this trail and whenever I'm close to the trail, obviously it'll have a little marker, a little beacon for me. From here, I can actually see, you know, how far away I am from the next shelter, you know, the points of interest scattered along the way, the water sources, whole bunch of other things on here. And it just is going to allow me to keep track and figure out where exactly I am in addition to the a wall guide. Now I'm not bringing the physical guide on this trail. For anyone that doesn't know what the A wall guide is, uh, it's basically, uh, well here you can see for yourself, it is a, I can't turn the phone too much, but it is a mile by mile guide that you can, uh, you know, kind of see your elevation. I don't know how good that's coming through, but you can kind of see your elevation you can see where the next shelters are. You can see if there's any problem areas for bears. But the big thing is it tells you 
each town that you come by, how far away from the trail it is, what direction the trail is back from the town, and also what's in the town. So say that there's a hostel and I need to call them. Those numbers are all listed in this thing. And I don't know how well you guys can see that, but everything is listed here. I can just click, uh, you know, tap on the number and it'll call that person. And, and it's really, really nice. It's, it's one of those things you kind of have to have uh, for a very successful AT through hike in my opinion. All right, next app I want to talk about is Instagram. I will be posting on Instagram hopefully daily, if not three times a day. That's what I'm kind of shooting for. You can follow me on Instagram at Frozen's Outdoor Adventures if you wish. All right, so for anyone that's been a follower of the channel for a while, you guys know that I absolutely love listening to audiobooks. So I got this uh, premium service, it's called Scribd, and I'm able to search and download audiobooks for offline use while I'm on the trail. And I think this is just gonna be one of those things that just makes me a little bit more comfortable while I'm out there, kind of like a luxury item, if you will. All right, going down the list again, we have Spotify. I'm a big music listener, I'm a big metalhead, um, love rock and roll music, and I will be listening to Spotify on the trail. Again, it's a premium service. I'm sure many of you have Spotify, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but I did buy the premium version of Spotify so I can download the music and listen to it offline. All right, what else are we talking about? Okay, as far as editing, I will be editing strictly with an app called KindMaster. And what this is, is just a, you know, a mobile editor. It's gotten a lot of praise. It is a premium service, but it's very, very easy to use. It's like six bucks a month. It's definitely worth it. You can even use it for free, but you'll have a little Kind Master watermark right up here in your screen. So, I don't know, for five or six bucks, whatever. Uh, this thing outputs in pretty much anything that I want. I can change the volumes of clips. I can add transitions. I can add music. It's really, really nice, and you can also upload to YouTube directly from the app. So that's what I will be using. I have a lot of tests on here. If you just search for AT vlog tests, you'll see how those videos kind of turned out. All right, another thing I have, and this is strictly for making thumbnails. I don't know how much of this I can show you without actually having a picture on the phone that I just cleared out. Uh, but this will help me add text to, uh, so I can basically take a video snippet out of KindMaster, run it through here, and then add text to it if I see fit. And that's really all that app is gonna do. It's called Snapseed. All right, let's talk about Atmosphere. Atmosphere is kind of like a white noise generator. I actually use this at home uh, to fall asleep sometimes, and it's amazing. It really does just give you that sense that you are near a river, or you know there's rain on your tarp, or whatever. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of things. You can even record your own sounds with this. Again, I did buy the premium version, um, for those of you that don't have it, by the way, check out Google Survey Rewards, I think it's called, or Google Rewards. Every once in a while they send you surveys and you get money off of your, um, you know, your in-app purchases. And basically, I didn't pay for any of these apps out of my own pocket. They were all from Google Opinion Rewards. But anyway, Atmosphere, really good app to kind of go to sleep to. All right, the last app that I'm gonna talk about and I will do an announcement with this. Well, yeah, it's obviously it's just a simple sound recorder. We can record sound bites. So why am I gonna need this? Am I gonna be writing a book out there? Probably not, but what I am going to be doing is I am going to be uh, a trail correspondent for The Trek. For those of you that aren't familiar with The Trek, they are basically a big hiking community. They're up and coming. Uh, they're getting actually pretty big. A lot of people know about them. They have their own YouTube channel where they kind of contract others is the way I could describe it, I guess, to film and upload to their channel instead of having their own respective channels. It gets people's names out there a little faster. Uh, if you're familiar with Liz, AKA Handstand from last year, she was a member of the Trek. She vlogged on the Trek and then ended up making her own channel. I did want to work with the Trek on this, you know, just for this upcoming through hike, but I didn't want to be a part of their vloggers because, you know, I'm already established in the YouTube community. I don't really want to do anything like that. I also didn't really want to write. They have, uh, you know, blogging on their website as well. But last year they offered this thing called, uh, it was like a podcast through Backpacker Radio. And it was basically... Uh, homework assignments given to the through hikers, not only the AT, but the PCT and the CDT. 
Uh, you submitted your assignment and they kind of made it into like a podcast. I really enjoyed it last year. One of the people that I was following last year really exclusively was Ivy Tat, Jeff Oliver. He was amazing and he just kind of let the emotions flow. And I really enjoyed not only watching his vlogs, but listening to him on the Trail Correspondence podcast. So I did apply to be a Trail Correspondent. I got accepted. I didn't actually think I was going to get accepted because just the pool of people that they pull from is so massive and they're only picking, you know, three or four people per trail. So I did get accepted and I'm really happy about that. I think the first episode by the time you guys watch this video is going to be out sometime this week. I'm not sure at the time of filming this video, but I will put it in the description box if I have any other information on how to find this podcast if you care to follow me and a couple of other through hikers this year. So anyway, that is my electronics and that officially wraps up my gear video. So we talked about all the gear in depth. What I want to do next week is I want to put every component, every piece of gear in its respective stuff sack, kind of lay it all out, go over any changes, if any, of my gear that have changed since filming the in-depth video of that category. And then, uh, you know, pack everything up, make sure it fits. It fits, trust me. And, you know, kind of show you what the pack looks like all filled up, maybe throw three or four days of food in there as well. All right, health and status updates. I'm good. I'm back to working out. Did some miles on the treadmill. Uh, it's been really freaking cold here. We're going through a polar vortex right now, uh, like negative six, negative seven degrees. Uh, didn't want to hike in there just because I wasn't sure how the knee would react, but next week it's going up to like 45, 50, and I'll definitely be working my way back up to the 20 mile days that I know and love, as well as doing the insanity program that I also know and love. Uh, let's see what else. I picked up traveler's insurance. It was actually really, really easy. I highly recommend it. It was like 46 bucks for the entire time that I'm going to be out on the trail. I just have to make sure I'm a hundred miles away from my primary residence the entire time. So traveler's insurance is checked off the list. Dealing with my car next week to kind of get it ready, get it inspected and all that stuff. Got my driver's license update so I can drink beer along the way and we're all good here. Anyway, I'm Frozen with Outdoor Adventures. I'll see you on the trail, and we are going to be on the trail very, very soon here. Only, what, two and a half weeks and counting. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.